and welcome to Confetti All Around, a podcast supported by Rooted in Reflection. My name is Cynthia Perez, and I am so excited for today's guest. It is Denise of Paramama, and I want to have her introduce herself. Um, she is a local artist, but Denise, how would you describe yourself in this time of your life? What are the roles that you're wearing these days? Um, hello, everyone. Um, I was I would just I was describe myself as an artist, a storyteller, and a mom, a, a mama. And um, from the IE Inland Empire Riverside, um, I've been an artist my entire life, and <clears throat> a creative person, and um, just I'm excited to be here with you and. Have our conversation. We were kind of having our little yeah. pre combo, and so we're coming in hot right now. Yeah, we are. We are. So I'll do. I'll go ahead and take this one, Denise, because we had to literally come inside the house. We had a moment, and I really appreciate you, Denise. Uh, I appreciate you coming in authentic. We we were just outside, and we were talking about her art, and I had to tell. I have to tell y'all what I told her in the DMs, and I just wanted to catch up. I said, Denise, when I saw your art, I stopped because I felt like you read me. I felt like you read my soul and I felt a little bit like, how did you know that? Specifically with the Abuelas, it's the beautiful red uh, painting. If, you've, if you haven't seen it, check it out on her website. But um, it's like three or four Abuelas looking down on a woman or a child uh, meditating or resting. And Denise... I said, I, I can tell that this has happened to you or that you've seen it, and I want to know more. Okay, so you're, you're speaking of the, the piece, it's called Ancestors, and it's with the uh, four, um, like, nanas, and they're all wearing red, and they have their braids, and yeah, and there's a reclining figure. And that, that piece, wow, what inspired that piece is something crazy. <laughs> Um, I have a dear friend that I met through Instagram. Her name is Vettel. And, uh, you know, we, we always have these like very deep spiritual exchanges and she has really seen me in a lot of ways that no one else has ever seen me. And so she told me she has a lot of messages that come to her through the dreamscape. And she said that I was in her dreams. And um, she said, I, I don't know what it is. And, you know, she's had many dreams. I just want to clarify that. <laughs> and she has inspired several pieces that I have created. And when I tell you how we got there, it's just, it's so mind-blowing. But she said she saw, she saw me um, in her dream, and my head was bent over, and I'm drawing. <clears throat> oh, my God. This always gets me, like, so emotional. I'm not going to be that person right now on a podcast. You can be whoever you need to be. I don't want to, because I, I have this okay. message, and I have okay. to, like... I have to spit this or I'm going to forget. Um, she said that there were four large, powerful guides that were behind me while I was creating. <clears throat> and when she told me that, I was just like, wow, that is crazy. You know, I'm thinking like for the ancestors, spirit guides. Yes, they're all those things. Right. And so that her telling me that message just <laughs> it just inspired me to do this piece. And what always blows my mind is it's almost like that. What comes first, like the chicken or the egg? Like, you know, she, yeah. she saw me doing it. She inspired me to do it. But do you see how it just, it, yeah. okay. So it's like, and, and, and she told you this message, which is part of her gift of telling yes. you of sharing it. it so so had she not told me, I would not have created it but I must have already created it for her to see it in a you know right in some you know mm -hmm. I don't know the knowing within both of you so we've had this exchange where we do this a lot and um so that's what inspired that piece <clears throat> and it's so dear to me because it just I think of my own ancestors specifically my grandmother's and I do a lot of like spirit work with my with my grandmothers. Oh my god, why am I so emotional right now? 
Did you share? Let me take okay. a drink. Water. Sure, sure. <laughs> totally. Oh my god. We had a very heavy conversation before this. It was beautiful, but I also think we've been holding this. Thank you for sharing. Take your time. We're you nowhere. know, I'm a water sign. <laughs> a bitch is emotional all the time. Here I, for it. I like, and I know that when I'm passionate about something, my voice quivers a lot. So it's something I really dislike about myself. But um, we're gonna go with it. I'm getting it together. Okay. So that piece, very near and dear to my heart, very near and dear to my matriarchs, and. If I ever get a card reading, I, they always come up. They're behind you. Ooh. <laughs> so, I think I'm always going to be known for that piece because it has touched so many people. And it just makes me just be very, like, in my emotions to think that I have their, <clears throat> their protection. I have them holding me up in whatever I do. And that's what gives me like the fucking audacity to do what I do. Yeah. To be honest with you, it really does. When it was just myself and I had to like muster everything, like to be everything, to try to know and learn the latest programs and drawing or painting or, you know, Photoshop, like that was hard to try to manufacture all that power by myself. Mm. And I could not do it. <clears throat> and that's why my art was looking so different back then. Because it was more like me trying to prove myself. Uh, prove my worth as an artist. My skills. Um, trying to get people to like what I'm doing. Not, it not having like that spark of life. And I think a lot of my work is beautiful. I just took some pieces, you know, down from my little shelf because I was gonna take some tonight for this art walk that I'm gonna be vending at and I thought oh I mean I have these pieces I'm gonna bring them down I'm looking at them and I'm like wow my like my styles are so different now but it's still it's still the same it's so beautiful but anyway it's you know. so beautiful and the word that keeps coming up is abundant because you you're you sharing that shares so many for us like wow, I didn't just see that. She, this is what's coming to me. It's like, you're also a messenger, like your friend was a messenger. And, mm -hmm. and that's why I think it's so important is that the message doesn't just stop with you. You're sharing it and it's abundant because we're like, <gasps> so it, it, it allows curiosity, it's an invitation mm -hmm. and it's stunning. Thank you for sharing it. And I, it, it, it really, it stopped me and it made me go, okay, this is, and so I was sharing with the outside, like you are an example, your art. And I reached out to you. I was like, you are doing epigenetics. And so right now you were like, I get in a flow and I, I think of this and you're a really great writer. You know, mm. you've done blogs and, and you've been writing, you've been in this writing game. And it's so funny because I was like, yeah. pear mama, I think of your, your visual art. <clears throat> But I was talking about epigenetics and what epigenetics is, is your switches from your ancestors, seven generations deep. So on both wow. sides. Yeah. So they, these switches are here to protect you. So when you feel anger, when you feel nervous about too many people, maybe in your lineage, you had to protect yourself, whatever. So these switches come up in us. And so we've known them as like complex PTSD where we're, 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 we're feeling angry and we don't know why, but maybe that's an ancestral switch saying, Hey, protect, protect them. Mm -hmm. What, what I'm in, in the business of, but no, really I'm, my purpose is to show people our ancestral joy that if you have an anger switch, your ancestors also coped and celebrated with the joy switch, with the art switch. So what can you tap into that your ancestors did to, mm -hmm. to thrive like them? And so I was asking you, like what you're doing taps into some part of ancestral part of you. And I was seeing you like, I asked people, what would you be in your lineage? What was, where was a storyteller, an artist? And I could see you as like the storyteller of your lineage. Mm -hmm. um, and so I feel like you, explained your flow and I'd like you to explain it but you are tapping into that 
deep ancestral power of of your art and your mm-hmm. ancestry and i feel like your your flow is you like carrying out your ancestral well, legacy we, we talked about like being in meditation and sitting in meditation and <clears throat> i know for me it had a, it's like a muscle that i've had to learn how to yes to work out and flex the mm-hmm. amount of like inner knowing and, and intuition and listening to messages that come to you sometimes I mean I'm a big daydream where I like kind of like doze off a little bit and I used to always think as a kid oh I have like a really great imagination because a bitch be like just thinking things and coming up with all these scenarios and seeing stuff and knowing things and being like huh you know not realizing that that was like a literal gift that I had that I have and that I now for me to focus in on it and to be intentional like during times of meditation um is being sensitive and just listening being still and listening and realizing like oh shit and it just really comes down like this like crystalline message i don't know how to explain it but you just it just kind of comes on to you and you you know that shit how I don't know, but you know. You was, know. was there a moment that you allowed yourself more to be in this? Was oh, yes. Could you feel like an old Denise that had to kind of like let this flow in? Oh, definitely. Um, I was married for a really long time. And then that was a, <laughs> that, that ending, that relationship, that chapter of my life, that like, you know, season of my life was coming to a close (laughs) and it was that was very like just that rocked my world yeah because this like version of myself was dying was dying and I was fighting really hard to keep it alive and I realized no that's just gotta go um so that freed up all this space in my life the the grieving the stress the whatever let's try to make you know that let's try to make that love work like okay there is a season for that and then that season was ending that shit was ending and so when it was it was kind of like I had this like collective breath where I was like damn like I can really make this shit the way I want it to be now yeah and you know I could sit here and mourn like well it's sad I couldn't make it happen with the other person whatever that was a story that story is over now and it was a beautiful story and now i'm on to another beautiful story but like just the 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 space that that freed up in my life was mind-boggling and shit like like i said i was able to do things the way i wanted to do them i was able to have a different relationship with my kids i was able to see myself and you know like not in through a male gaze <laughs> like you know what the amount of fucking freedom that opened up for me and and roads that that opened up for me and then yeah i can't imagine <laughs> you not like late at night scrolling through your own website and admiring yourself <laughs> you know because you have this collection I really now don't. oh well I mean, you have a collection of just, I mean, I want to ask you too, it's this profound work. How how do you separate like how beautiful it is for you personally and then sharing it with other people? Is there a separation you kind of have to do of like, whoa, I just painted something that came to me in this meditation, this knowing, and every, it's for everybody. Is there a part of you that has to like sit with that or is that, oh no, it's fine. <clears throat> Once it's done, it's done. I really feel like once it's done, it's done. Okay. Because holding on to it, that it just grows kind of stale for me. And it has to have that flow. It has to have that Mm. flow. And if I hold on to something, that's like me telling the universe, like, I'm good. I don't need, you know... (laughs) Wow. I don't need more or you know what I'm saying? That is a sound bite for everything, Denise. <laughs> like being op right? Being open, period, being open to abundance, being in flow. Yeah. And then also too I'm thinking like, 
I can always, I, my creativity, creativity is limitless. I can make this over and over again. I can make it beautiful, different, like, you know. I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's for me first. That's my gift first, right? So that's what nourishes me. But in the process of me sharing it and being brave enough to share it, then it blesses other people. I don't even like to use the word bless because it gives me like I know church too. church. It. Same. So um, I'm thinking like it's just good energy, right? That's good energy. I'm sharing with other people. Other people get to like receive it, and then it's just that whole exchange. Yeah, it's always gonna come back to me. Anyway. <laughs> I knew it. When I saw it, I was like, you you share that in a picture. I used to be, like, afraid because I didn't want something to steal my shit, okay? And I had to work through that, too. Like, how am I going to guard something, like, again, that's me limiting myself. Mm. So I don't think about that anymore. I don't think of people stealing, like, my style or you know it's like damn everybody got their own journey nobody is ever gonna do what i do no one's ever gonna do what you do i okay yes can we so i was also sharing with you outside that creativity i feel like has saved me in so many ways um i was working in the hospital and just it was just not fulfilling and what creativity has done is exactly that this abundant mindset of like yeah, that was that was a really great event and I when I was there, I was there. I was present. I loved it. What else are what else can we do? What else is the space? And it's this beautiful expansiveness in creativity. Can we talk about like how it feels when we're creating? I mean, I I you know, after I felt like I had so much expansive expansiveness in my life where I can now sit with myself and be like, Well damn bitch, like who are you? What do you like? Like, I creating was like, that was a big one for me. Was having the space to do it. You know, like being intentional. Like, okay, guys, like this is my space. And I'm going to make it with all my supplies, my desk, my lamp, whatever. Like, this is going to be my space. Um, and that was like, okay, we got to get our space so we can get our shit done, right? But just, it felt good to do it. The whole process of like relaxing, um, just like being in flow. For me, it's drawing. Creativity for me is drawing for other people. You know, it's gardening, it's cooking, it's writing poetry, it's all the things, right? But for me, it was drawing, painting. I, I was like, wow, I need to be in this space because first of all, that shit, regulates my central nervous system. It allows me to just really unlock a lot of puzzles. And we talk about that all the time. I'm like, at the time that we're sitting there painting, that we're stroking that canvas with the brush or we're drawing on the iPads, like our brains are like, do, 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 do. Like unlocking, unlocking all these boxes within ourselves. Also unlocking shit with keys. So there's fucking keys in there and it's unlocking puzzles in our life and not just our lives, but I mean like collectively our lives, like society, our community, society, the planet, like everyone here, the animals, all the shit. Like it just, you deep dive into like this whole other space when you are being creative. So that's why I was like, no, I have to fight to be in this space because... If I'm out of that space where it's, damn, like the rat race, like I just wither up like, damn, a little gotcha on the floor. <laughs> like I can't, I can't. So I have to be, I have to be in that space. Yeah. And I, I fight for that space. Beautiful. And I feel like those nanas also protect you to be here because what if you and I'll, stayed okay, there? And I'll we tell need you, you why. Yes. And this is why. Because they showed me, okay, in a like a guided meditation one time, and like that they did not know anything 
but serving, child rearing, having babies, mm. taking care of their men, taking care of all the kids, cooking, cleaning, caretaking, taking care of their in-laws, their parents, their elderly, okay? And I'm thinking, wow, I don't know if any of my nanas, did anybody, was anybody a poet? Did anybody, was there a dancer? Was there anyone else that was an artist? I don't think, I never ever heard those stories. And that's what the message that they, they, my guides were like, they want me to live that. Absolutely. And that made me cut so many ties with things with the person that I was before. And they gave me the freedom to do that. So yes, I think what you were, what you were, I don't know why we wrapped this back into this, but that's where a lot of the power comes from. I can see it. And you, you document it. Yeah, you're in your flow. Because that shit is mind blowing to me. And then you <laughs> confirm it to us in your art. And it's like, you know, yeah. like you're, it was almost like when I see your art. I like do a snapback like did she just and you confirm what others may see or may sit with and it's just so beautiful it's like what it's the medicine you know that's the realm that we all tap into that's what you were saying that's what it is the creative fluid can you can you explain what you were talking about the creative fluidity I'm frequency to, the frequency yeah that's what it is it's that creative frequency that we are on. We were just talking about that. Like how you feel when you're creating something. It feels good. It feels good to your your nervous system. Um, you feel safe. Yeah. You feel protected. You feel happy. You feel at peace. Um, and if you don't feel happy and at peace, that's okay too. You'll get to that. You'll get there. You know, I just feel like it's safe. Oh, and that, you're and sitting with the process when you create, like you have to sit with each. That's what can you, I kind of saw in you. Like mm -hmm. when you're, if you're, even if you're not okay, you'll get there. You're sitting with it regardless. Because that's how, uh, just, that's my normal practice. So other people could do yoga, you know, what, some breathing, any kind of thing that's going to get you there. And so for me, it feels like that is literally the meditation for me. Yeah. And because I do it so much, I think that's why it looks the way that it does. Um, the messages that it like shares to other people. It's the sheer amount of time that I, I do it. I, I draw a lot. And I was, because I was never able to be a mom, having all my kids, having a partner that I had to, you know, endure, <laughs> you know, like at, at that time, it just, I... All my space was gobbled up. And that's what made me think of my abuelas, all right? My nanas. Like, well, this is why they could never tap into this was because all of those things. And you doing this is your purpose. You're supposed to protect your creativity. You're supposed to make yourself the ritual of creating. And then you give, but in this way that is luxurious. Your colors are rich. They're these beautiful paintings. It's not us like suffering. It's these beautiful, rich pieces that are that stand out just like so many, you know, our lineages. So could you could you tell us why you chose the colors you wanted to share that? And we said we got to record. OK, <clears throat> um, so this is always my example. So, you know, you're at the beach. We're from Southern California, so we're familiar with being at the beach sunset like the sun has just gone down <clears throat> but it's still light outside everybody's still out there at the beach and having fun and you look at the sky and the sky is like purple lavender muted gray tones it has some blue and I, that is bitch that's me okay <laughs> and I, i'm like why am i so drawn to that and i think it's because i feel like that's where spirit is that's where spirit lives for me. Mm. So when you see a lot of those tones in my work, that's where I'm at. And I have other pieces where, you know, like the ancestor has a lot of red. That's basically the only one I've ever done that has so much red. 
Um, I, I don't really work with red all the time, but that one I think because it's such a powerful piece and they're my strong and powerful guides, like they have to be in red. <laughs> you know, I think I often think of that like, really red? But no, they you were knew. like, you they were like no, yeah. put us in red, you know. And that was another guy. Gonna... And that was another guy in meditation that I did where I saw myself as older wearing like a red, uh, like a hooded cape like that. When bitch, when those come back in style, you said it here. <laughs> you said it here. Confetti all around. <laughs> Them hooded capes, yeah. like bitch. I'm gonna be all over that. I'm gonna have all the colors. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it is, yeah. <laughs> it is such a, it's so big to talk to you. I can't even say any more words than big. I, it's just, it's so confirming for me. It, it means so much in my own personal journey. I was sharing with you that I got this job opportunity to leave where I was to get a different job and it would be completely working for myself, which means I would work from home. And so everything felt great. It felt, oh, more money. That means less time working and more time at home. Everything was feeling good except that it was for, it, it, it's doing uh, telehealth with a majority of uh, farm workers population. And that is my lineage. My family came from Yucatan to do farm work. And that is how we got residency from a, my abuelo's lineage of doing farm working. So it felt like, who am I to do it? I started doubting myself. And one day... I was uh, in the backyard with my husband and he left after and I'm still meditating. I thought I was meditating for maybe five minutes and he's like, you were out there for like 30 minutes. And I was like, what? But in that I saw just what I felt in my knowing was abuelas. And before this, I had never had anything like this. I would have said, I'm atheist. I don't believe in anything. And it was that night that it was like, you got this, you can do this. And I remember just coming out of it with tears and this knowing that I am making the right decision. This opportunity presented itself because it's supposed to. In the work I'm doing with in, in telehealth, it is like exactly where my mom needed mm. a therapist. And I'm seeing it in these stories that move me. And then I get to teach parents about their nervous system, how to do these tapping things, how to, how to uh, lean into rest, how to take time off, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's also funny because I was in the hospital. So now I get to help them know about their disability rights. It's all aligning with my purpose. This is my purpose. And then I, I do my meditations and I'm reconfirmed like this is where you're supposed to be. This is how you help. Isn't it crazy how it just lines itself up? <laughs> Where it's not crazy, it's just the way it's supposed to be, you know? I often think that, like, like why me? Like, why, you know? I, I think of that sometimes. Not in, like, an ungrateful way at all, but I'm just like, why? And I think it's because I listened. <laughs> wow. Right? Like, I listened, and then I believed it. Girl. I listened, I believed it, and then I was just like, just do it. Like, just do it. If people don't get you, then they don't get you. If people think that your art's weird now because it looks a little different, who cares? Like, what if at the other end? Like, it's a whole other thing, a whole other world. Yes. <gasps> so... And again, the expansiveness of, well, I'm already over here. And if you don't get it, I'm so over here that I can't explain it to you. You have to catch up. Yeah. You know, I, I was sharing with you, you know, my husband is a creative and I realize I'm a creative. But the freedom that being around creative people that I mean, everyone's creative. Everyone has creativity. Yes, but so definitely. many people are afraid to to be vulnerable in it. But when you're around positive, creative people that let themselves... It's you're feeling safe enough to do it. That's what it is. It's you see safety. other people living like their authentic fucking selves. You know, they're not going to care about you. <laughs> you know, so be yourself, right? Like, I, you know, uh, I let people exist in, in their spaces now. Beautiful. Where I feel like you know, we talked about that too, like heavily policing other people's faces because we're you know that's yes. what we have learned and like no it's i don't do that shit anymore yeah and imagine if 
you, you limited something, we wouldn't have something as beautiful as your art. It would be like, no, you can't do that. That doesn't, that's not what, I mean. You know what, and that's what keeps me clean in a lot of ways. And when I mean <laughs> clean, I mean, I have steadily been learning my cleansing energetic practices and things like that. And that shit is real. <laughs> and it's real because I say that shit is real for me. Like, I have seen the difference. I see when I do my rituals of cl cleaning myself, cleaning my home, cleaning my spaces, it makes a huge difference, you know. And I just, I could, you know, remember my old life or, you know, person that I was before and spaces. Like, it just feels very, like, knotted up like a dirty ball, you know, all the things because we didn't know any, I didn't know any energetic cleansing practices because I wasn't taught them. I and did, I did want to ask you actually, what was your childhood like? Were, did you have creativity everywhere? Did you have to shrink it? Were you able to just be in your garden? What, what would we find you doing, Denise? <laughs> Little Denise. Oh my gosh, little Denise, she's so cute. She was very sassy, okay, and she always had her two little chongos, her ponytails. Um, very curious, and I've always loved to draw. I've always been attracted to shapes, colors, things like that. My dad uh, was an artist, and he used to have his little stack of albums in his little smoke studio room. And I would just love to go through all the albums and look at the album art and the colors and that just really attracted me. And um, so I was always drawing. I was always drawing. I was always into, um, we'd go to the library. I would love to go find like little art books or books about whales. Like whales were my shit always. That's why I was saying when I, you know, I'm going to reincarnate as a, a whale. Beautiful. I know, most of my people. Yeah. <laughs> but... I've just, yeah, always been into art. And then, you know, when I, my parents divorced, that whole story of, you know, being a child of divorce and all those things, like the drawing was my safe space. Again, you know, moving out of my family home, having to move into another home, having to live with other family members, not knowing where the hell my dad's living now, all those things, like, I didn't realize it at the time. Now that I'm like grown, Denise can see like, well, goddamn, that no wonder. Like, I don't have a lot of memories of that time. Um, didn't really ever really feel like safe because now we were yeah. in this, these like foreign spaces all the time. And art, like that space for me, that was like the safe space, always in my imagination. I used to draw like families, which I feel like is kind of sad now, but it's not sad because like. I knew even at that age, like I can conjure this shit up. Yeah. I can conjure up these worlds for myself. And that's literally what I was doing. I was drawing little families, them in their house, or oh, that mom, dad, like, you know, trying to do that whole, like, you know, to get it together for myself in this little imaginary world yeah. because of what was happening in my real, my, my reality was too much for me to comprehend at that age. So, I would just always align myself like, well, I'm an artist, like, that's me, you know? <laughs> Even though my family was like, well, that's a cute hobby. You know, my mom was like, well, you know, you, you're you very smart and you're good at writing. You can do this, you can do that. And I was just like, yeah, I don't know. So, you know, at every turn I've done what the hell I'm going to do. <laughs> and And that's with me having a very, you know, traditional family hierarchy where it's like you've got to do what your mom you know expects yeah. of you and all those things and um how are you as a teen did you dress colorful did you dress more in blacks like oh, what's the, you I know in california mean, there's so many different vibes what what were you like as a teen how did you express yourself i mean, I mean that's the, the whole 90s that i mean that was it like i mean shit i basically dress the same <laughs> now i mean honestly I've just like circle back, <laughs> docks, bands, band tees, like jeans, black nails. Like, I don't know. I, I feel good in this place. I'm like, this was, 
these are this is good times. I feel like I've reconnected back to that so that person, like my younger, you know, before marriage, before I had to like shift into that world yeah. and take on that, you know, I was shape shifting this this whole entire time. <laughs> you just need to connect something right now. What? Just shape shifter. Mm. Like that is something that I feel like I have embodied a lot and I've had to working through those ancestral wounds in places and I've had to be like be a certain person and then see in my knowing like what's ahead well bitch it's time for us to change again and you know when you see those movies where someone like metamorphosizes and yeah. they're like ah screaming like they're in so much pain and wow. you're just like that's like like right figuratively that's how it is when we have to shift shape shift from thing to thing and we're just gonna keep doing it we're just gonna keep doing it i just see this all this shit as just being a endless eternal journey okay and also, you know that you can do it because you you shared a little bit with me and, you know, just and I, the first thing I thought is, Denise, you are you always got you like you in every you always met him. You 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 shape shift into exactly what you need. Yes, exactly who you need to be for yeah. the the past self and the present moving forward. Like it's you getting, got you it's getting less painful with each shift <laughs> can you say that again for people <laughs> okay as i okay so as a shape shifter as i'm metamorphosizing to the next shift as i'm as i'm getting older and wiser it's less painful the shift is less painful okay. and yeah because i don't have to fight myself as much i know that that's really futile to fight what's already there in front of you <laughs> yeah it's so beautiful okay and what in what ways have you felt your inner child connect with you oh my god in so many ways you were talking about my inner child and i draw her a lot so the, the little girl with the two little braids oh, so that's usually me okay <laughs> And I didn't realize that it was me. I mean, I was just like, I need to draw like a little a girl figure. But it, it is me in a lot of ways. And so that's how we connect. We connect a lot through music. Um, so if you if I put on like my little like 70s, like late, like 70s playlists, those are like really like foggy memories for me. Um, but they were always beautiful, peaceful memories. Um, I remember being like very safe and protected and just kind of free, very free with my thoughts. Yeah. Cause you know, life hadn't gotten as hard, you know, it didn't get hard at that point yet, you know? So we meet back on that and I do have a, a piece it's called remembering and it's a little girl kind of like a, in a field and she's carrying like a little doll. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we meet back in those spaces <clears throat> and it's crazy. And you know, we always have this conversation and I will, I, I will say, I think back to like when I was younger and I always send her love. And that's why I always tell the people that I love, like always send love to your past iterations of yourself <clears throat> because they need that. They need that love. So I send my love to my younger self maybe not at that young age a little older when life started getting mm -hmm. harder i always send them love and i feel like it's again it's that that like ex eternal exchange because i'm sending them love which is from the <laughs> my future self right anyway it's i get you i okay. get you so i you, see it you send them the love and that's helping them go forward to get you where you are. And so you're setting yourself back. And it's like those, you know, you see those movies where they, you know, their younger version goes back in time mm -hmm. and it 
gives them a message yes. and they're like so it's Say, very much like yes, that yes yes um so yeah we spent a lot of time together and so she's a big she's a big inspiration for me too and i love that i'd love to be a boss bitch <laughs> yes <laughs> and we always we always tell each other my my homie on bottom <laughs> That's a boss bitch move. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know? I love it. So I always feel like she would be so happy because someone who was silenced and ignored and uh, there was really no like awareness. Like my parents were going through their things. I get it. I understand that. But there was not a lot of like awareness. I didn't feel people were aware of me. And like my needs. Why is Denise in the room drawing in the dark with like a little spotlight over her desk? Like maybe she's going through something or maybe she's not happy that, you know, her mom's boyfriend moved in. Or, you know, like maybe she's not happy that she doesn't know where her dad lives or, you know, things like that. I'm like, there's no awareness. So I love the fact that I can be in this present iteration of myself and see like, yup. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you, you give her voice now. You give her the the pen. Yes. The pen the pen, the paintbrush. You let her say, Okay, what are we saying? And she's like, Me? Mm-hmm. Yes, you, absolutely you. And then to But see she always like, knew though. She always knew though. She <laughs> always knew. And she was like, Oh, it's about time now. <laughs> that's I think that's where a lot of the tears come for me too. Like I've been saying this and I couldn't, it wasn't safe. Mm -hmm. You couldn't be this like open. That's it right there. It's not safe where I feel like there's like a generation of people who are like barely peeking their heads out right now. Yes. (laughs) In my home, creativity was a waste of time. Um, Mm -hmm. My dad's an engineer. It's all about get a engineering and I was terrible at math. So what am I good at? I really felt like I was good at nothing. Here I am always a creative person thinking, I just daydream. I just have this big imagination. And even I would close my eyes and the things I would think sometimes would scare me because it was just so like big of me. Right. And that's you like thinking of other worlds or you're tapping into possibilities. You're not just that you're tapping into realms that do exist. Thank you. Okay. And we were talking about that. Like, so if you see some of my work or something that really resonates with you or like in your meditation time, it's because that's like a realm that we've all visited at some point. And I really feel like that's that creative frequency too. Beautiful. It's like this little highway where people are doing the things that we're meant to do and feeling good. And our central nervous systems are nourished and we're like, all right, everybody's, it's all love. It's like good energy, good vibes. We all have, we all kind of have a feeling what that looks like and what it feels like I think some of us are maybe a little bit better at like communicating what it feels like what it looks like to them so my work if you you see like the colors of my sky or you see backgrounds plants water that's what it looks like to me I love it you know she is a happy girl over there then (laughs) I would love to be in that world right that is not too bad and I also think it speaks Uh, Wait, um, can I say something? Yes. Okay, my stepson, he has his daughter, um, her name is Melissa, and at the time I believe she was like seven. She's so cute. And um, I was I had my iPad, and I'm drawing, and she came and she was like looking over my shoulder, and she goes, ooh, I like this. And so we're talking about it, and she said, I want to go there, like I want to be there. And I was just like, I felt so seen by her. Like she was recognizing that it looked like a beautiful, like safe space to be as a little girl. So. It passed the kid test. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was like, she saw your inner child. She said it to little Denise. Like, like I want to go there. And I was just like, that just made me feel like, damn, like all these years of like, conjuring up like worlds and things for myself now it's like you said like tapped in yeah to that and and it's scientific now but you know it in your inner knowing like yeah 
So yeah, we could put words to it, but you seeing it, you're a, you're like a physical display of a flow. Mm -hmm. I, it's like somebody can only draw something that they've a realm that they visited, and so yeah. for you to let yourself visit it, because there's so many people I think that just close themselves off to any kind of I can't do it, I can't do it. I wanted to share with you the other day. My mom painted a little tile piece of canvas. My little five year old, he's like, I'm an artist. He'll walk by. We'll be walking outside, and he'll. Um, he'll see a tree and he's like, that tree mama, I'm going to draw it, but I'm going to do it purple. And then the le and he just knows, he's like, okay, let's go. And then he'll go, you know, but my mom in my home never, I never realized I haven't ever seen her do art or creative, like hobbies or anything. And so yeah. it took about 30 minutes to get her to do this piece of art and she loved it, but she was never in safety. My dad would have criticized her. Mm -hmm. The minute my sister came, I was like, I don't want her to see that I paint with my kids because it's like she criticized it. My sister came in and I was like, that is the part of our home. That's why my mom. And so to go, it reminds me of how you said all these women that only knew child rearing that didn't get to let who could they have been if given the safety, the, the, the freedom to be in their creativity. Can I tell you something crazy? Please. My ex-husband was also an artist mm -hmm. <laughs> that's fun and it was this very like silent tug of war that we like a competition kind of thing mm. between us i would never have believed that but like you know now that i have like so many years of like reflection like two years of reflection i'm like like huh yeah <laughs> maybe it was a little competitive you know and energetically it was competitive in the way that whenever I wanted to like, okay, it's time for me to like reinvent myself and start to shape shift. Like he didn't like that because then I started creating more and for whatever reason it would put like, I don't know. I just don't think he was feeling like confident in whatever, but that energy and that atmosphere prevented me from like, I'm gonna start doing stuff because I didn't feel safe. It didn't feel like I had the space to like bring up all these like very personal, beautiful things to like start creating because it just didn't feel mm -mm, like the energy was just not there, you know? So I'm a firm believer though that in divine timing and that Everything in the totality of my life has had to happen the way that it has to get me to where I am now. You know, that like whole ascension of your higher self. I really believe in that shit because <laughs> I've like, I've had so many just, I've been to some places and I'm like, how, like, why, what, what is like, what has got me there has just has really been the the creativity. Yeah. Okay. Like tapping into that and tapping into that place. And I tell you, it's like highway. And that's all the energy that's there. Yeah. And <laughs> I I have now I had a med I want to share this because I see so much of the I had a meditation the other day and it's that you said something earlier that she always knew. Little Denise mm -hmm. always knew mm -hmm. who the F she was, that she's a boss bitch. She's been a boss bitch <laughs> since the playground days, right? And then sometimes had to, like, accommodate adults. But I, I've i been sitting with, oh, my gosh, you, you know, you talk about doing the puzzle. When you're, when you're painting, when you're drawing, it's connecting the dots for you. You're yeah. in play. You're able to be in safety to put the puzzles together. And for me, I've developed courses that I thought were just, like, like, doesn't this make sense? I could read a book, and I guess this is my craft, I've realized, of, like, getting a book, a couple of books, and going, okay, well, let's talk about this. Let's do some journal. But for me, it was like, ugh. and I feel like sometimes people think creativity has to be hard or art has to feel hard, and it's yeah. like, if, it, if that's your gift, if that's your knowing, it's for you. And sometimes we try to compare, like, I got to be like Pear Mama, and it's like, there's only one Denise Pear Mama. And this is your purpose. So, do you know what I mean? You mean, we, we have a lot of conversations about just the language that we use. 
you're like, oh, it's taking so long, or oh, you know, whatever we're working on. Oh, I'm, I'm so we're. I'm trying to really watch my language as far as oh, God. I'm trying to explain. Okay, say what you were asking the question. It's okay. I was. Some people just think that creativity has to be hard. Okay, it doesn't yeah. have to be. Yes, it doesn't have to be hard. It's just giving yourself the time and the space. Yeah. To do it and. What I always think to myself, what 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 else do people do? Like a lot of people watch like mindless other people's know, creativity, other people's creativity, <laughs> or you know you're very like into um, like media stuff. You like watching movies. You're like that. I don't know, but I'm almost like, what do y'all be doing? I like, love that. I, I'm not like a huge. TV watcher, I do have my little shows, watch, you know, right, right, for you know, and stuff like that. But I don't know, I don't, I think I just devote a sheer amount of time to it because I haven't been afforded this luxury in the past. Okay, so there's that too. Like, whatever I think, like, I'm turning into like the biggest fucking weirdo. I'm like such a hermit now, I'm just there, like, do 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 do, you know, draw and do what I do. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like literally in my senora years right now. Yes, I want to. What is your ritual? How do you like to just be? Yes. What does your ritual look like in this? What are you leaning more towards right now? I mean, commanding respect first and foremost in my space and my boundaries and having my kids be mindful and be like, listen, like it's not like. I'm the mom and what I say goes. It's just like, let's have this mutual respect. Like, this is my space and this I'm going to do what I'm going to do in my space. And it's a lot of like, I'm wearing comfy clothes. I'm wearing a top knot. I'm like, I have yes. to have like my tea on deck. I have all my little nature <laughs> objects. Because uh, I have my little, you know, I have my little altars that I have, you know, certain places. I have... You know, my work there, I have my paint, my paint brushes. It's just a lot of, um, a lot of burning incense. I have a lot of Oracle cards, you know, and it's just like being mindful. Like it, I talked about this on a, like an Instagram live not too long ago about like being able to tap in quicker, faster, like get into that place. Yes. You're, you're protecting all of it. And I yes. see you really mothering little Denise, like, we, like really yeah. like, okay, we're going to go into this process like a good mother, you know, like this is what, you know, and really just making sure todos tan bien mm -hmm. and letting them, you know, really like taking care of them as a ritual. I love that. And it's so beautiful. And then it shows in your work because for someone to, to paint something so beautiful, I would hope that you live in that time of like, yeah, I, I treat myself like that. And it's so beautiful. Yeah. And that's doing the shit I want to do. <laughs> being with the people I want to be with. Um, like being honest with my, with myself first and foremost and being honest with my family too, because, and I mean like extended family, I mean my parents basically, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, things are different now. And I think they're, they're kind of seeing like, okay, well, D, she's just, she's doing her own thing. But then I've been doing that too. You've been knowing, like you, <laughs> you've been, been telling them. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And so when I say like sassy, yeah, all the things, but also very sensitive, like to a fault mm -hmm. to, I mean like Beautiful. very sensitive and not just to like people, but to energy, sensitive to weather, god damn, like sensitive to sounds, like you know, I'm suspecting may there may be some like neurodivergence. Okay. It's something that my sibling and I talk about a lot. Um, you know. <laughs> or they like to tease me about, you know, and I'm just like I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Which would make would explain the gifts. Mm -hmm. Um, but I love that you <laughs> just really lean into the things that feel good for you because it produces something that is beyond, right? Like you're really, ta uh, like, 
giving an offering mm -hmm. to all the parts of you. You know, because they give so much in give sharing. Me an offering to again to my guides. Yes. Yes. Because yeah, I feel like that's definite the, the balance that I'm always working with is like venerating them, recognizing them, which was that led that alone was what led to the mural that I created. I talk about, yes. And well and like we're saying you're drawing sacred spaces that we've felt or seen so i can see how you you know you want to be delicate with and honoring this one it was a, a like very specific please like, talk about like it. instructions and that i'm like so happy to say that like i completed them all <laughs> you know and it was just god um we were submitting proposals for something else in the city and for a certain project that i didn't get and so, but let me, I'll, let me tell you the, yes, the, the meat and potatoes of this mural <laughs> and how it came to be was just, again, like their instructions that it's for grandmothers and it's the four um, tribal mothers in the Inland Empire. So it's the Capuya, Luiseno, Tongva and the Serrano and they have their other names but they're really hard to say but um they just wanted like rec they wanted to be seen they wanted to be respected they wanted to be honored so that's why I created them almost like totems so that when you see them you are reminded of whose land that you're on and all the things that they have endured in pain and in joy and totems for, I feel like if you see them and you have some reverence and respect for them, then that's going to be multiplied back to you, mm. you know, and totems for my city too, just so that we can be respectful and mindful of, again, the land that, whose land that we're on. So that's how they came to be. And I had some like feelings about being out in public and being so exposed. Yeah. And we had painted some other things in the past and it was it wasn't the funnest thing to be having my ass out in the corner painting, people honking. It was hot, it was dirty, it was all the things and I was like, you know, but again I just felt them you're going to be good. You're going to be good. You have to consecrate the space every day when you're there. Um, you have to have your offerings. Have some fire going, you know. So it was very much that. Wow, it was ceremony. So, so every day that we went out there to paint, and, it, you know, we would, like, unload all of our things and get everything set up. And I would... Um, do like a little, I would like circle us with salt, the whole space, and I would pray. And then we would have, um, we would burn some kind of, you know, either sage or rosemary. And um, we would do the four directions and just call for protection, um, evil eye reverse that shit back to like none of you know and I really feel like it was um kind of like a container that's what it that's what I was trying to say I created a container we, we created a container for ourselves because it almost felt like very much like we were in our own space where I was like I don't want our backs to hurt like let's move swiftly like like bless our hands so that we can get this on the wall, get it painted, no injuries, no weirdos coming by, like, you know, and it, we were there sometimes, we were like there for like six or seven hours. How long did it take from start to finish? Um, like two weeks. And there were some days, most days I had like, I had my people there, you know, I had sacred art there with me, a bottle. Um, 
She was like, my right hand, my right hand, my A1. She's here today. <laughs> she, Thank you. Girl. Um, I mean, I had my sibling help me. My kids came to help me. Um, but we did that every day. Even on the days that I was in with myself, I was yeah. like, I have to do this. I see it again. Community, ceremony, mm -hmm. something to remember, to honor, you know, something yeah. to practice mindfulness. You're just, you're not, you're going through your day in this busy yeah. stop for a minute. I did. And you know, before I would have been like, just nervous, just being out there, my back to the street and also vulnerable, letting people see what I'm creating, like in the early stages, like what's going on? What is she doing? Whatever, <laughs> you know, but everything was just very planned out. Um, they had their own story. Their colors mean something, you know, each tribe, there's like the people of the pines, the people of the earth, people of the desert, like people of the West, they all have their own meanings and but serious, like I feel like you know when you pass by them, they're like, <laughs> yes, wow, thank you for sharing that. And and I just can only imagine you carry that with you in in all of it, the bigness, the grief of it, the joy of it, the honor of it. Yeah, I mean it's in a, like a. If you would have told me that, I would have a painting, a mural. On our main like public library, which is this huge building, I would be like, which what you know, what? That's crazy. Yeah, and it's the Riverside. Where can mm -hmm. we find it? Riverside Public Library. Yes, it's on Mission Inn. It's literally um, like a block away from the New Cheech Museum, yes. Riverside Art Museum. Make it a day. Go see the Nanas. It's go to right the museum. Street, or right next to uh, Teal's Tacos. And there you go. They have all their amazing found art objects, sculptures. And yeah, Beautiful. it's crazy that so many people are going to get to walk past it and, and see it. And I always think like, well, that's what they wanted though. Like who they're seeing is like they're seeing them. For Beautiful. sure. Beautiful. Oh, and I have my final question how you know you i know you're doing this work visually and i can tell that you're spirit led and you share it with us and i thank you for that from the bottom of my heart from just from my ancestors from my abuelas to you like thank you for letting us see ourselves in this very lush rich decadent way yes <laughs> yes how we and, and it's it's this permission this invitation to be in rest to be in lush to go back to the land so thank you for that and sharing it how do you, how do you, what are some words that you hope your, your kids and just your legacy is told as the ancestor you're, you are now? Because you are living as an ancestor. You're a living ancestor. How do you want to be remembered? <laughs> I think that, just, that goes back to just, God, who I am. Um, and I, I always have this conversation with my kids. I was like, okay, when I'm not here in this earthly realm, you have your altars in your house. That's what I'm getting at, yes. What, what you gonna put on the altar for me? <laughs> right, let <laughs> me know? tell you now. And, um, I mean, trying to be honest, trying to bring that, mm -hmm. uh, just the authentic person um, that wants good things <laughs> for myself and beauty for myself and why wouldn't I want that for everyone else you know um but on the altar there'll be a little bit of weed there'll be um some incense for sure there'll be a little bottle of patchouli oil <laughs> um fruits of course because I love fruit you'll always have a cup of tea because I love tea and I love herbs. Um, they'll definitely have bouquets of chamomile because I love that plant ancestor, chamomile. Um, so it'll be with me there too. Um, of course my art, you know, they'll have pictures of my art. So many pictures of us together, you know. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you. It's beautiful. And I know, you know, I I don't know what's next in your your season as an artist, but I thank you for the gifts that you share with us and I just look forward to all of your creativity because like you said it's it's limitless. And you you're you're there and you're you you said um I listen. That's what you said. That's yeah. that's what really guides you. So I'm here to welcome all of it and thank you so much for being here. Where can people find you? Where could they buy a uh, a uh, a print. An art print. Yeah. Well, so you can find me on Instagram. If you're on Instagram, Paramala. Um, also, my website, paramala.com. And I sell prints, like smaller 8x10 prints, um, some stickers. I do have some 5x7s. I also um, sell Z Clays, which are like one of a kind prints. They're all uh, signed by me. So if you wanted that, you know, you can find that there. I also have some of my writing there. That used to be like my old uh, blog site too. So I have some, I still have some things that I have up there, you know, but for the most part, I'm not as active on there as I should be. Like I, I always want to transfer what I have on Instagram onto my website. Yeah. And so I'm in the process of doing that, you know, amongst, amongst yeah. other life happenings. But, um, yeah, you can find me there, and this year I have just some cool projects in the in the works, kind of making some other uh, moves, not just, like, art, you know, but curating and also um, creating, like, a little, like a, like, a deck, a card deck. Beautiful. And so, yeah, that's. And maybe more murals. I'm like, Say it. Murals. Speak it. Like, so even after the whole experience, you would do more murals? <laughs> I would, but I have to have my team. Like, I, And it has to be like your... It has to be plan. a team. It has to be, you know, it, it, there's a lot of factors, but I love what it brought to the community. I would love to do more, you know, for sure. You heard it. Make it all happen. We're here for it. Thank you so much, Denise. Thank you, Paramama. You're such a beautiful spirit.